A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video! Huge thanks to Matt Parker and James Crime for inviting me to their mega faith numbers playlist here on YouTube. If you don't know what all of this is about, take a look into the description, info box or pinned comment, you can find a link to the playlist there. Basically a bunch of mathematicians, including me, of course, this is why I'm making the video in the first place, obviously, are going to talk about their most favorite number over a million. Mine is obviously 73,939,133 because it's the biggest one of very special kind. And this is only part one basically of a two or three part series. You can already find another video out here on this channel in the info box description etc. where we do some Python implementation. We are going to implement the most efficient algorithm I came up with in Python and we are going to show that there is a finite list of those special numbers and that this one is the biggest one of its kind. So I hope you are going to enjoy everything I post here. If you haven't subscribed already feel free to do so. Also subscribe to Flimble Maths for way more maths content and now we are going to dive right in. Now what is the special property about this number? Well, it's a prime number. I think I'm swatting if you didn't join. <laughs> no, um, it's a prime number, which is already pretty cool. I mean, it looks pretty funky. It's, it's a prime number um, over a million in some way, but it's also extremely special because it's the biggest, it's the biggest prime number of a kind, namely right truncatable primes. What does it mean for a number to be right truncatable? Well, you can take off the last digit, and it's going to be a prime number, that's pretty cool. But this is not the only property it has to satisfy. It's only right truncatable if you can repeat this process up until the last digit. Meaning, if we take another digit off, it's going to be a right truncatable prime. If we take another digit off, it's going to be a right truncatable prime and so on up until the last digit. So that's extremely interesting, right? Um, if you ask yourself if there are also left truncatable primes, so you take the left digit off and it's going to be a prime, yes, those are out there. You can also generate a list of those. They are going to be more left truncatable than right truncatable primes. There are also truncatable primes which are basically from the left and the right truncatable up until the middle and so on. It's pretty interesting. But I choose the right truncatable primes because that looks pretty sexy if you ask me. Now we are going to dive into the mathematics behind right truncatable primes, put some restrictions on the numbers that satisfy this very property and in the next video we are going to implement everything into a Python algorithm. So yeah, we are going to dive right in. At first I would like to play around with base 10 and digits basically. I would like to take a look at the digit decomposition of some random arbitrary um, prime number with n digits at first. So we are going to have a prime number I'm going to call p with an index n. This n just um, basically states that we have n digits. Now, what's the digit decomposition? Well, it's just going to be the digit 1 and then we have the digit 2. It's just going to be a tuple up until the digit n. So, think about it. Digit 1 is going to be, well, the first one here on the left, 7. Digit 2 is going to be 3 up until the nth digit. We don't know yet how many there are going to be digits. The n is going to be 3 in our case with this prime number up there. Okay, now we are going to induce the property of a right truncatable prime onto this digit decomposition. So what have we done? We took off the last digit, meaning prime number with n digits turned into a prime number with n minus 1 digits and the most important property is that all the other digits are going to be preserved up until the n minus 1 digit. So after taking a digit off, we are going to get ourselves a digit decomposition as follows d1, d2, blah blah blah, up until the n minus 1. And so on. We are going to continue this process for it to be a right truncatable prime up until the very last digit. Meaning, after n minus 1 iterations overall, we are going to get to p1, which is just, well, a prime number with a digit 1. Okay. Um, that was quite easy, but how does this help us? It, it really doesn't help us right now. This is why we need to take a look at further um, emphasizing on what a digit decomposition actually is. And for this I would like to just take a look at my most favorite number as a little example. So let us take a look at 135. It's my most favorite number out there. And how can we decompose this into something in base 10? Meaning we're going to decompose it into digits corresponding to powers of 10. Well, at, at first let us write out what the digits actually are. So our digits are 1, okay, and then we have 3, and last digit is 5. Okay, I hope you can see where this came from. But now they have to correspond to powers of 10. Meaning, how is our 1, our digit 1, 
connected to what we have here. Okay, think about the word 135, meaning our one digit one corresponds to number 100. Our number 100 is nothing but, well, 10 squared. Hope you can see where this came from. We have 100 plus and then we get 30 plus 5. Okay, our 3 corresponds to the number 30, meaning the power of 10 is just 1. Now our number 5 is just, well, it's just 5 basically times 1 and 1 is 10 to the 0 of power. For the sake of notation we are going to also put the 10 to the 0 of power into here. Meaning overall, what are we getting exactly? I mean if we were to put this into digit notation we would get, okay 1 is our d1, then we have 3 being our d2 and then our d3 is going to be 5. And take a look at the index, it ranges up until the number of digits. Okay, 3 is the number of total digits we have here in 135. Now we also have powers of 10 in some way, all the time. And now we need to see how those powers of 10 are connected to our total number of digits and the running index we are going to sum up over. Okay, now we have 10 squared. Now how is 2 connected to 3? Well, we are going to take the total number of digits 3 and we are going to subtract our running index from it. Okay, 3 minus 1 is going to give us 2. Does this pattern work out for the next one? I mean 10 to the first power is just 3, total number of digits, minus our running index 2 that we are having here. Hey, works out, same should be here, 3 minus 3, total number of digits minus our running index 3. And thus we have found out a nice formula. Meaning overall, if we were to put this into summation notation, we would get in some way a running index, we are going to call it i, which is bounded between, okay, what's the lowest index? That is 1. And what's the highest index? There would be n in some way and our n is 3, okay? Now, how does it work for our digits? Our digits are just going to be um, raised by 1 all the time. So 1, 2, 3. We are just going to count over the running index. Then we have 10 to the... Okay, what is constant up here in the power? It's always the total number of digits, which is 3 in our case, or for the most generalized version is going to be n. And other than that, we are going to subtract our running index from it, so i. This is how we can decompose our 135 into a digit decomposition using powers of 10, basically, and our digits. Now we are going to expand this knowledge upon those prime numbers that we have up here. Meaning overall, what we have here, our pn, is going to be the summation where our running index i goes from 1 to, well, now we have n instead of 3. And obviously we just have the same pattern. We are going to have our di's here and then we are going to multiply it with 10 to the, okay, our total number of digits is n and then minus our i. Okay, what about our pn minus 1? Our pn minus 1 is going to be, well, just the same thing, just with n minus 1 instead of n. So our i is bounded between 1 and n minus 1 overall. And then we have di times 10 to the n minus 1 minus i power. Now we are going to write a bit more stuff out and we are going to see if we can find the connection between our prime number with n digits and our truncated prime numbers because this is a really important relationship that we need to take care of. I'm going to put this here. At first let us write out what pn actually was. pn was nothing but, okay now we are going to write everything out. This was the first digit times t to the n minus 1 power. This is just the pattern that we are having here. Plus, then we have d2 times 10 to the n minus 2 power, plus blah blah blah, up until, okay, then we have the n minus 1 times 2 to the first power. This is always going to happen. The n minus 1 times 10 to the first power. And the last digit that we are going to have is just the n. Okay, how can we continue from this point onwards? Well. It's not really obvious, but this is how I continued. You see that we have 10 as a common factor up until this nearly last term, okay? One term before the last term. Meaning we're going to factor out a 10 right here, leaving us with d1 times, okay, then we're going to get 10 to the n minus 2 power, okay? We factored out a 10 and then plus d2, 10 to the n minus 3 power, plus blah, 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 up until, okay, the n minus 1, plus the n. But how is this going to help exactly? Well, now I want you guys to take a look at this right here and we're going to write it out a tiny little bit. 
How about we write out the first and the second and maybe up until the last term. So we're going to get d1 times, okay, 10 to the n minus 1 minus 1. This is n minus 2. Ah, this is cool, right? Plus, and then we're going to get d2 times 10 to the n minus 1 minus 2 is going to give us n minus 3. Plus, blah, 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 up until d and the last index is n minus 1. This is cool, right? What we have here is exactly our pn minus 1. Okay, I, I had to look for it. So we have pn minus 1 here, meaning overall pn, the nth prime number in some way, can be expressed as 10 times pn minus 1 plus the last digit, dn. And this is going to help us a lot, finding out what our digits that we can append basically to the very first digit are going to be. Now, we are going to write it out yet again and we are going to take a look at some modular calculations. So we have that pn is nothing but, what is 10 exactly in its prime factorization? It's 2 times 5 times pn minus 1 plus dn. And now, here's one key fact that comes in with prime numbers. Prime numbers, pn, are only divisible by 1 and themselves. Meaning, if for example our dn were to were 2, then we could factor out the number 2 right here and thus pn would be divisible by 2. Doesn't work out. What about dn being equal to 4? Well, 4 is nothing but 2 times 2. We could factor out the 2 yet again and thus pn would be divisible by 2. What about um, dn being equal to 0? Well, then our, our pn is divisible by 2 and 5, which wouldn't work out. Meaning overall, if we were to take a look at modular calculations, our dn right here must not be congruent to 0 modulo 2 or it must not be congruent to 0 modulo 5. What this means in general is that we can restrict our dn right here. dn must be element, so or must not be element, let's, let's put it like this if we were to take a look at the modulo, it must not be element of 0 and then we have 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Okay? If it is any of those elements, it's not going to work out because pn would be divisible by some number, for example 2 or 5. But this overall means that our dn's must be element of all the numbers, all the other digits, not in the set right here. So what's not in the set? Okay, dn could possibly be 1. This would work out. If it were 1, we don't have any other factor which can be shared by um, those two terms. Okay, it could be 1, it could be, okay, 3 is missing, it could be 7, or it could be 9. And if you take a look at our biggest right truncatable prime number, well, those are exactly the digits we have here. 1, 3, 9, and also 7 at the beginning. The first digit is a bit of an odd one out, because um, it doesn't really need to satisfy what we have here, just because um, if we were to write a Python script, for example, or just take a look at this digit decomposition, it could be any old prime number that you can find, because the last digit must only be a prime number. Meaning overall, our first digit d1, this is another restriction that we can put on here, d1 must be element of all the single digit prime numbers that you can find. So for example, 2, 3, 5, and 7. This is what they could possibly be. And this is all the information that we need to create ourselves a list of um, all the right truncatable primes that there are. So, meaning, if we were to implement this into a Python script, and this is the most efficient one I could come up with, it gives you the list of all the prime numbers which are right truncatable in a matter of seconds. Now, how does this work? So at first we are going to start off with D1. We are going to get ourselves a list of all the d1, so the first digits, which is a list of 2, 3, 5, and 7. And what we are going to do is we are going to create ourselves another list, which includes those other digits, those dn's, which we are going to append to this string basically. Now, what this means is we are going to take the number 2 at first, and we have four possibilities for the number 2. We can append 1, 3, 7, or 9 to it. So we have 21, we have 23. 
we have 27 and we have 29. And now we are going to let an algorithm run which checks if those numbers are prime because well we need them to be prime numbers. So 21 is not prime, 27 is not prime. So 23 and 29 are right truncatable primes just because we can take the last digit off and we are still going to get a prime number out. We are going to continue this process for free and then for five and then for seven. Then you are going to get a list of all the two digit right truncatable prime numbers. And from this point onwards, we are going to continue this process. Now we are going to take the list of all right truncatable two digit prime numbers and we are going to append new digits to it. We are going to take 23 and we are going to append new digits to it. Starting with one, so 231 and then 233 and so on, blah, blah, blah. Up until we get all the three digit right truncatable prime numbers. Let the prime number algorithm check, run yet again. So um, this one is not. Um, prime because it's divisible by 3, but 233 should be divisible by nothing, so it, it's a prime number. And thus we get this and then we are going to append those digits yet again to it and so on up until we, we reach the point where we have all combinations checked, meaning this right here is going to be our biggest right truncatable prime number then. I hope you understood everything I said here. I hope this video was to your liking. If it was, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and to check out the other videos that come with this very video. And yeah, thanks again to Matt Park and James Grime for inviting me to this special event. If you have any big number video that you want to share with us, then make sure to check out the playlist and to add your video to it. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.